Hey, this is Seth Kniep, Kniep in It Real. Hope your day is going really well so far. If you are selling Amazon arbitrage, whether that's online or retail, I'm gonna share with you the seven best categories to start selling in. Not only for ease of sale, but also for making a quick turnaround on your investment. I'm also gonna share with you how to know if your product is going to sell. So you don't go spend money on something at Walmart or Target or some other discount store, buy all this stuff, send it into Amazon and sit there and wait. And three months later, you haven't made any money. And that's not a situation you wanna be in. So this is a de-risk video. I'm gonna show you how to de-risk yourself as much as possible. The first time I did Amazon arbitrage was when my wife used to buy stuff at closeouts, at discount stores. She would go to Goodwill, Salvation Army, any place she could find. And she just started selling stuff on Instagram and eBay. And then we realized, you know, we can actually do this on Amazon as well. And I'll never forget the time we found this t-shirt and it was at a store with a discount rack and we bought a bunch and we sent them into Amazon and they sold very quickly. And we thought, you know what, we could do something with this. So we found a manufacturer in China, they branded it for us, we put our own logo on it, our own material, our own sizing and everything, and we began to private label this shirt. And it began to do very, very well and sell multiple times a day. And today it continues to sell. This was a really cool example of transitioning from arbitrage to private label. Now the nice thing about arbitrage is the risk is much lower because you're gonna make a smaller upfront investment and you can get a return on the investment much more quickly. The disadvantage is it's very hard to scale. And by scale, I mean to keep on growing bigger and bigger and bigger without it using up your time and killing your freedom. Because the whole point of working for yourself is so that you have time, so that you can do the things you love with the people you love. Well, if you are trying to make money online doing Amazon arbitrage, what I will do today is give you the seven best categories you can start selling in, along with a little tip to know what are my chances this item's gonna sell. That way you're investing your money in something that's much more likely to get make you your money back. Number one category is toys. Not number one by being the most important, but just the first one I'm listing. Toys is very important. When you start selling in toys, the nice thing is most of it you don't have to get special requirements in order to get approval. Toys category itself is already ungated for you. You can start selling right away. And toys are very themed. For example, when you know the next Star Wars film was about to come out and you go find a bunch of toys for a discount and sell toys themed to that Star Wars, that's a massive opportunity. People buy them up like crazy because all the kids watch the show or the movie and they talk to mom and dad, Christmas time comes around, birthday, mommy, daddy, get me the new Star Wars toy, the new Stormtrooper, whoever it is. That's a great opportunity. Now keep in mind, if you start selling really small items or something that a child would put inside their body potentially, whether they're supposed to or not, or something with potentially sharp edges, you might have a hold on how soon you can sell that, and Amazon make, might make you go through a few steps and get approval and certification to sell it. So try to keep these innocuous, generic, general, safe, larger items, and you can make a really fast return on your product selling in toys. The next category is home and kitchen. Home and kitchen is a growing massive industry on Amazon, and there is no end to the new products that people are coming out with in this category because there's so many things you do in a kitchen and in your home, and people like to spend money on their homes. I spent money on this studio. I literally turned a bedroom into this really cool, what I think is a badass studio. And I'm sorry for those of you guys who don't like the color green. I think green's a pretty cool color because it represents growth and it's one of our Just One Dime colors. But home is a great category because there are so many kinds of products. And what's really cool about home is you can have a decent BSR, bestseller ranking, and still sell really well. The next category to look out for is sports and outdoors. Sports and outdoors is another great opportunity. There are tons of places that have discounts during different seasons, whether it's hunting season or football season or baseball or the summer with swimming, where you can go to stores, find a discount or go online, find a discounted item and start buying it, sending it into Amazon and selling it. Again, there's no approval needed for selling in the sports and outdoors category. The next one is baby and nursery items. You'll actually see this as a subcategory if you're browsing by categories on Amazon, a subcategory to the toy, toys, games, in child category. Now, the nice thing about baby and nursery is moms and dads as well, but especially moms, are very, very into protecting their child or buying the best for their new baby because that, I mean, the, the gift of life cannot be 
compared to anything. This is a life, a little child, and they care about that baby. So they're going to spend money to protect and take care of and nurture and feed and train and raise that child. So when you think like that, when you think like a parent, you know also how to sell a product to a parent and a product that they love. Now, when you go to stores like Toys R Us or Walmart or Target or any kind of store that's selling items that relate to a baby or a nursery, a very young child, make sure the item is not small, does not have sharp edges, is not something that could be ingested. That way you don't have to go through an approval process or filling out certification forms with Amazon. Make sure you do that. Once you've done that, you find a product. If you, if you can tell that the product that it's selling for is far below what it's selling for on Amazon, you have a massive opportunity to make money. The next category I recommend is books. Now I say this with a little hesitation. Books is a great category. This is actually one of the first things I sold on Amazon, not private label, but I had a ton of books. I had a whole wall of books. I had over 2000 and I just started sending them in and selling them. And I sold most of them, not all of them, but most of them. And I made some very decent money. There's one guy who joined our Just One Dime private label program. Before he joined us, he was doing arbitrage and he spent $50 and turned that into almost a thousand on books. So if you go to half price books, or find a discount section in Barnes and Noble, which is hard to find, but they do sometimes have like this big, this big area, this table where they have hugely discounted books. And you check on your Amazon app and see what it's selling for. And if you know you can at least make a 33% profit on that, a third of it would go to you, a third of it would go to fees, and a third of it goes to the store you buy it from, I would definitely buy it. The next one is clothing and shoes. Now this is a gated category. So keep in mind, you don't get approval automatically. You have to start selling, then apply to get approved. And once you are approved, you can sell in this category. My wife and I, we do sell in this category. This is a big category for us. But once you get approved, you're now in a smaller group of sellers. There are fewer people to compete with. You're fishing in a pond, not a lake anymore. And if you find clothing that has high brand value, you can make an absolute killing in this category, even on shoes. Shoes, clothing, Nike, Reebok, there are so many brands out there that you can make a ton of money if you do it right. There are brands that will sell for 70 bucks a piece retail. You can get it for $15, $20, sell it on Amazon for $40, $50, and you're making money like that. And what I love about this is you send it to Amazon's warehouse, they sell it for you while you go out and find more stuff. Last but not least are handbags. Handbags is a really unique category because there are some very high-end bags you can buy and sell on Amazon. For example, purses, coach purses, huge opportunity. Coaches sell for a large, a very pretty price, a very high value. If you find one at a discount, even if you find it used and if it's in good condition, you can sell it as used or used like new on Amazon and make really, really good money. When it comes to clothing and fashion, handbags, purses, shoes, you need to understand the brands. The brand is where the value is and that's where you're gonna make a ton of money when you do that. My wife is really, really good at this. Now we private label the majority of her clothing, but she still goes out and finds deals and makes money on the side. And for her, it's just fun. Now here's a tip. And this is a tip that we actually teach as well in our arbitrage class here at Just One Dime. Look for gift items. Find items that are going out as gifts. This will give you a massive opportunity over the competition. You need also to check the best seller's rank. When you find the ranking of an item, you can quickly tell based on its BSR what its chances are of selling. As a general rule of thumb, do not sell anything whose BSR is a greater number than 100,000. Let me explain it really quick. Let's just say you're selling a rock on Amazon. They're probably not selling this rock on Amazon, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it anyways. If this rock, if a rock of this type and shape and size and color is selling on Amazon, uh, really, really well, multiple times a day. It's BSR number is going to be on the lower end. The higher the BSR, the slower it's selling. So you want a low BSR, low best sellers rank number when you're selling something on Amazon, whether it's private label or retail online arbitrage. As a general rule of thumb, don't go higher than 100,000. Uh, let, let me just give you an example of this. If you have a BSR of 100,000, as a general rule of thumb, you should expect that item to be selling once a day. Not bad. If your BSR is 50,000, you should be expecting it to sell around two times a day. 
If the BSR is 25,000, you should be expecting it to sell around three times a day. Now, this is going to vary based on the category. We actually created a list. We took all the different countries and we took all the different categories and we created a list and we really narrowed it down for US, Canada, and United Kingdom where you can go in and look at the BSR and find out what the sales rate expectation should be based on that category. We did this for 22 categories. In fact, I will send you that list for nothing, just completely free. If you click on the link below, enter, click on the link, it'll take you to a page, put in your email, whatever you want, so we can, our system will just automatically send it to you and that way you have that list. But this list, it allows you to go through, and let's say you're at the store and you're scanning and you find this item, let's say it's a purse, and you're thinking, should I buy it? I mean, it's a really good price, but what if I send it into Amazon and it sits there for three weeks? How do you know? You look at the BSR, and you can find that on your Amazon app on your phone, which is completely free. And if you know the BSR, you can quickly decide whether what the chances are of this selling. So let me give you an even more specific example. If you have a BSR of anywhere from 100,000 to 250,000, be very careful, put a lot of thought into it. If you have a BSR anywhere from 50,000 to 100,000, do a little research, check, make sure, really make sure the chances of selling are, are strong. And if you have a BSR of 25 to 50,000, that's almost a complete no brainer. You should get it. And if it's under 25,000, why aren't you buying it? As long as the price is low and you get a minimum of 33% profit on the item, you definitely need to buy it. And so this list, it should help you out a lot because what it will do is you can go in and say, okay, I know, for example, in the kitchen category that if my BSR is 25,000, I should be expecting three sales a day on this listing. Therefore, if I buy 10 of these, I could sell them pretty quickly. And within two weeks, you should expect the item to be gone and you make your money back. In the beginning stages of our Amazon arbitrage and retail online arbitrage, what you want to do is go with lower BSR items because you need to get that money back quicker. If you're short on cash, be more picky. But as you grow your business, you might buy an item that sits there for three months, but you know it's going to sell within three months. So you're not going to make your money back for a couple months. But if you have a hundred different items or a thousand different items and they're going to sell all within three months, once that three months is over, you've made a lot of money. You just have to be less dependent on immediate cash when you take that approach. So be strategical about how you do this and how you time it. Hey, I hope this has been helpful to you. Seven categories. Those are the ones I recommend you start with. This isn't just my opinion because I work with some amazing arbitrage people, specifically a guy named Alan, a guy named Saad. They actually teach a class on this for just one dime. They're very good. And so thank you, Alan and Saad, for your help in this video behind the scenes. Hey, I hope you guys have an awesome day. Keep going. Don't give up. Pursue your dreams. You can make it happen. I completely, by hard work and by people who have come alongside and helped me, have been able to reach really, really cool amounts of freedom in my life as a result of working hard, and you can too. There's no reason you can't. All right, you guys have an awesome day. I'll see you later. Bye.